we wanted to bring together some voices from the community, folks that have seen this in the past before. What is next? You go from a moment, you move into a movement. Now, where do we go from here? We want to start off by having our panel first introduce themselves. Uh, Cher? Hi, I'm Rocha Bilal, the newly elected sheriff of the city and county of Philadelphia, the first ever elected in this position in 181 years. Hello, my name is Irv Randolph, Managing Editor of the Philadelphia Tribune. Hi, my name is Ebony Dukes. I am the President and Executive Producer of My New Philly, a local media outlet here in Philadelphia. Hi, my name is Kofi Asante. I'm the Executive Producer, Artistic Director for the Philadelphia Juneteenth Family and the COO of the Black Male Community Council. Hi. Thank you all very much for joining us. Let's get right to our first question. Do you think we are seeing real progress and why? I think we are seeing some progress and I think this movement has us moving forward because to me, this is like the second civil rights act that's coming about here. Uh, the nation has seen what has been happening for decades of for people of color, and now everybody is now standing up and speaking out against it. I say we see some, but we need to see more. Right. I think, the, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I think okay. one of the most encouraging things is the progress that is being made as far as conversations about racism. For a lot of years, we've been seeing it swept under the rug or people acting as though it did not exist in this country when we all, of black and brown people, all know that it is. So um, progress has been made in that alone, if nothing else. So I'm very encouraged by that. I, I would agree that I, I, that there has been some progress in terms of the conversation, um, the conversation about regards to police reform and also racial inequality. Uh, that conversation is now uh, it's definitely in the forefront of the nation's consciousness in a way that we haven't heard uh, in recent years. And so you see progress in terms of the conversation, you see progress in terms of uh, state legislatures and city councils uh, looking at uh, serious policies and laws. Um, you see, I also see progress in terms of the diversity uh, of, the, of the protests. Um, you see progress in that area. Uh, I think that, and it's beginning, uh, it's gotten the attention of the nation's uh, national leaders as well. So on, you see on, on every level, local, state, and national, you see the conversation being moved forward. As one who lived through the, through the civil rights movement in the 60s, and what I see right now is I think it's phenomenal. Now, in the 60s was such a, a great movement for the African American in a lot of ways. Uh, and it was, it was, but I didn't, I've never seen it like this in terms of globally, that every, every place around the world is saying that uh, uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, that um, coming together matters, that the only way we're going to be able to survive uh, as a, as a human race is to get it together, to able to be able to look at one another, to ask the hard questions, to be able to deal with this um, as a as a as an epidemic, as a disease that has to be stomped out. And I, I am so proud of the young people that I see on, in the streets uh, of all colors, and I think that they are making a statement that um, what the things of yesterday are not going to be tolerated today. And you know, Kofi, I, that's, I, you know, Kofi that, that's good that you say that, and we've seen that before, and you've been around with the first civil rights, but uh, what is it going to take to sustain this? I think the momentum of, I think the momentum is going to sustain it. I think that we are tired. We're tired of seeing people die. We're tired of seeing uh, inequality. We're tired of humane... Okay acts in the community. Uh, let me, let me, let that me that get the sheriff in on this as well. I know what we're tired of, and I appreciate you saying that, and I also want to find out from uh, our other, pan other panelists, what do you think is going to sustain this, uh, Sheriff? Movement, to continue the movement. I, I understand we're sick and tired of being sick and tired, but we're going to keep moving. These protests, protests are not going to stop. Our young people are out there, and they are persistent. So they got to stay persistent, stay on course, stay focused, and let the movement keep moving forward. Yes, the movement sustains. I, I 
I think one of the other things that are going to that is going to sustain it um, is one thing that wasn't around when the civil rights movement was was a part was happening. Um, that thing is social media. Social media yes. has been an amazing tool during this during this moment in time because you're able to see what other cities are doing, so you don't lose interest and you don't take your foot off the gas. You also are able to see what's being ha what's happening. We're we're seeing video footage of the injustices every single day. And it's hard to ignore it when it's right in your face every single day. So social media, um, as long as people still continue to look and log on, I think we're not gonna see any let up anytime soon. I, I think we'll be able to see um, the change. We see change in policy, in anti-racist policy, and also laws and legislation. So the civil rights movement led to something. So all the protests, led to legislation and changes in law. And then that changed, uh, uh, it, that made the difference in terms of people's lives and, and made lasting change. So once, it's, once the protests lead to changes in terms of uh, laws in the local, state, and national level, then, then the movement would be more than just a moment, but would be um, something that you can then compare to the civil rights movement in terms of changing of policy. Uh, once that happened, then, uh, and, I, and I see that's beginning to happen now, beginning to have changes in terms of policy, budgets, uh, when there's a change in terms of how allocation of money and resources, oh, yeah. um, that's when I think mm -hmm. you'll see the change. Well, you, you know, I also want to, when you talk about change, you talk about legislation, and here's another step here that seems that uh, it, it's still a big challenge here, is what can you do to identify and then eradicate systemic racism. What's the next step in that? The conversation needs to continue. People need to continue to have that conversation. People need to continue to talk about racism. It's, it's no longer, I ain't racist. It's like, how, for, how are you anti-racism? And what are you going to do about it? And so the movement puts everybody on notice. You can't no longer say, I'm racist. Now is what? Or how far are you in anti-racism, and what are you doing about it? That, in my opinion, helps. I'll, I'll circle back to uh, the issue of policy because um, racism didn't just come out of nowhere. So I mean, it was to promote a particular interest, and that interest was then codified in terms of laws and policies. And once you uh, address the issue of, of uh, changing those policies. I mean, when you look at, in terms of the civil rights movement, you, you had to address the issue of redlining and the race, the segregation in housing and and in terms of um, and public accommodations and education. That was the issue then, but that was a matter of law, okay? And that was a matter of policy. So you, you'll see the change. I want to see the change in terms of procedures, policy, law, and then when you, once you're attracted from that angle, then you, see, you begin to see behavior change in a long lasting way, as opposed to uh, just rhetoric. <laughs> once the rhetoric changes to, act, to real action that you can't just change, um, or it's just not a moment or a discussion, that's when you'll get to see the real change and in, in the things that we're talking okay. about. All so, right, Kofi, you wanna jump in there? I think, I think the, I think the, I'm gonna go back to the movement. I think the young people, uh, in the various ages and colors that they represent are going to uh, uh, stop racism. Not in our time, but I think they will continue uh, to fight. They will continue to look each other in the face and ask the hard questions. I agree that the social media is going to play a, a big role in that. Their policies can change. We need an economic uh, playing field that makes sense. Uh, and, and that can come around. But I, I hear the voices of these young people around the world that they are definitely saying enough is enough. Uh, they are they are not, they're looking at people's character. And not let, let me just jump in here and, and say this because I, I just got to go right back to the civil rights that you brought up, Kofi. Uh, back then, enough was enough. And there was the fight and there was the legislation and, uh, and, and laws were made. But here we are, years later, fighting the same fight, so to speak, 
what is really making this different? What is going to be the next step? I think they're bringing out yeah. the racism that went covert. Don't forget, we fought the fight. We got legislation. We got amendments to everything. And yet they went covert. What's making a difference now? There's a certain number, 45, that's bringing it all back out. Starting to let certain people think that they're comfortable with their racism. Absolutely. And right there is bringing this all back out. It's nationally as to that number. And because of that, those of us who saw what happened in the 60s are stating no, no, and no. Yeah, I think it. I think another thing that, um, just to take it back to what Irv said a little bit, a, a little minute ago, was the redlining. Redlining has been because of systemic racism. Redlining is happening not only just with housing markets and things like that, but it's happening across industries. So when we talk about legislation, we talk about policy change. We have to talk about how we're going to fix every industry from the from the top down. Like everything has to be revamped. It has to be reworked in order to include the opportunities for black and brown people that people have gone covert and made sure are not available to us. Mm -hmm. So it, it definitely has to come from everybody being anti-racist and now trying to show their anti-racism by making sure that these opportunities that we've been shut out of for so long are now becoming more readily available to us. Okay, one other thing, I, I want to just Not jump just, in there I like and just say, you know, we talked about redlining, we talked about the housing, we've talked mm -hmm. about the, uh, those different type of uh, uh, racist activities that have been going on. Is there something that we're missing? Is there something that's, that should be on the table that we're not looking at? Absolutely. Reparations. <laughs> How about reparations? <laughs> How about that? Let's yes. atone for all the hard work that you got millions and millions of dollars offer our ancestors back for free. How about reparations? Absolutely. How you decide what reparations is going to be. How about that? The that conversation definitely needs to be had. The unfinished yes. agenda of the it civil rights on the movement. Table. The unfinished agenda of the civil rights movement, uh, in my view, was economic inclusion. So, I mean, the civil rights was, movement was successful in terms of what the focus was at that time. But the unfinished and agenda, again, is economic inclusion. So once you have really economic integration, okay, uh, which, which is missing because of what has happened in the past, the plunder of terms of African-American farms, African-American businesses, where you're talking, uh, what happened in Tulsa, Black Wall Street, that's something that was repeated throughout the nation. So our wealth was, was removed and taken from us by really domestic terrorism, no other way to really to, to, to describe it. Uh, that's the unfinished agenda. Once, and because what's the root of a, no, a number of these issues is poverty and the lack of inclusion in, in on, the, on the economic level. Police brutality is an issue that disproportionately affects African Americans, but even more so disproportionately affects those who are poor. So, and almost everything you can think of disproportionately affect those who are poor. So that's an issue that we have to address. The issue of the racial wealth gap will address a number of these issues. Absolutely. It'll fix it from the top down. One of the one of the other things when we're talking about um, how do we fix this, it's, you know, there in Pennsylvania and in Philadelphia, 10% of all the minority contracts need to go to, I mean, 10% of all contracts need to go to minorities, but there aren't, they aren't specific enough with those contracts. So those contracts include people that are finding a way to to be covert in the system so if you don't start by fixing those those things so that 51 percent of a business isn't owned by the wife of someone who could have could have uh, filed for the whole 90 percent of the contract then you're not really fixing the problem itself because if you're not making sure we have access to those opportunities then we cannot we can't we don't have the same um, we're not running the same races. So are, are you saying those contracts need to be more race specific going Absolutely forward? Absolutely need to be Absolutely. more race specific. Absolutely. You, uh, you can, the contracts and all of those things and economics, uh, that's, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, Phil, if you look at Philadelphia, Philadelphia, we got, uh, we got a black sheriff, one of the baddest sisters I know. We got uh, more African-Americans in city council that are, that, uh, are in seats that we've ever had before. People what is it we don't have? What we, what we don't have is the real power. 
what well, we don't what well, we have a, we have a, an illusion of power and what's the uh, next step to we get have that? A, what i mean by that is is that uh, uh, the economics the politics in philadelphia are still run by people that don't look like us that's a reality that's that's something that we're not facing and looking at that dialogue has to happen that dialogue has, that conversation how does has that to get happen. changed how it, it gets changed because well because we're beginning to have leaders that are not afraid we uh, one of the, that's one of the things i appreciate about rochelle she's she's fearless we need people that are in, in in office. We need young, more young people that are coming to office out of these movements to really be able to fight and make these changes. There's a lot of us that are in power that are in complacent, uh, that are complacent. That, that needs to change. The All right, faces we're, we're, are, just, we're just about, Kofi, I understand where you're coming from. We're just about running out of time. Uh, appreciate those accolades to the sheriff. I'm sure she appreciates hearing those. But uh, before we wrap this up, I just want to get this last question out there. What gives you hope? What gives me hope is the spirit of the, the young people that I see. It gives me hope to see them fighting and standing up and continuing to fight. One of the things we did not talk about today was the spirit of the people. And that is like flourishing, it's flourishing across the world. And okay. I, I, I want to get, I want to get, a, I want to get, get everybody in here on, on what gives them hope as well. So, and I appreciate it, Kofi, uh, only because we're just running a little short on time. I want to uh, go ahead and get to the sheriff. What gives you hope? The movement gives me hope. The young people stepping up and stepping out. Other people who have not stepped up and stepped out before gives me hope. The movement gives me hope. Ebony. Um, what gives me hope is the rise of new black leaders. I think um, social media has given voices to the voiceless and I'm very encouraged by the things that I'm seeing and what actions people are taking to make sure that they're doing their part to make sure the movement progresses. And that's what gives me hope every day. And uh, the last word with you, Earth. Our young people gives me hope um, that their energy, and their knowledge of what the time and what's, what must be done at this time uh, gives me hope. The protest gives me hope. The, uh, our history gives me hope. Look at how much we have overcome. We cannot uh, never negate what has already, what we've already, the, the achievements we have already made. And so there's still, of course, uh, far to go. But you, looking at our history, looking how far we have come, and so, still far to go. But our history tells me that we still, uh, that we are people who have faith and we are people who have courage and we will continue to uh, press on. Okay, and we're going to have to leave when it there. Fight, I just want to thank you everybody for joining us. And uh, we really appreciate our panel. We thank you so much for joining us. And uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. We do have to leave it there.